Ephesians 1 3. Ephesians 1 3, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We'll read four, because the sentence doesn't end. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has chosen you. If you have given your life and your heart to, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, know today he has chosen you from the foundations of the earth. You have not chosen him. He has chosen you. Glory to God. I just, I find that uh, incredible because sometimes a lot of people think that we, we, we picked Christ or, um, you know, you hear a lot of testimonies, well, when I found Christ, well, Christ was never lost. Jesus Christ was never lost. We were the ones lost and dying in sin, and he rescued us from the miry clay. Hallelujah. So it is him that has chosen us, and I am so thankful for that. There, I've been saved 36 years, and there isn't a day that goes by I am not thankful for my salvation. Hallelujah. And, and what he's doing in my life and what he has done. Okay, just quickly, I'm gonna, the word spiritually there, where it says back in three, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. The word spiritual there is the word non-carnal. It speaks of being spiritually minded, and it also speaks of the supernatural, okay? The word blessings there, again, this, you know, you can do an in-depth study on both these words, but I'm kind of summing them up into a few words. The word blessings there, where it says he has given us, has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, the word blessing means to prosper, to cause to prosper. It means favored of God. Hallelujah. Did you know you are favored of God? Scripture tells us that. Deuteronomy 28. If you're not familiar with Deuteronomy 28, I, I, I uh, encourage you to, to get it into your spirit, man. You know, you may say, oh, that's the Old Testament. Well, you know what? We don't negate the Old Testament. The Old Testament... Um, is a type and shadow of what is in the new. And this has not changed, and I will prove it to you, because it starts out, we won't read it all, but I do encourage you to read it and to and saturate your spirit like that, that word imbue means. Let it just soak inside of you and know what God has for you, what his intentions are for you, because his intentions are for you to walk out a life of blessing and prosperity. And I'm not talking when we use those words. I'm not talking that he wants you to be rich. That, like the message we spoke, you know, what we had, what I had said earlier. Um, again, you know, if you are rich, God bless you. But that's not the goal or the purpose of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Verse 1 and 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord God. It's, this is conditional. It's based on the condition that you be obedient to his voice, you be obedient to his word. God is not a compromising God. He will not be lukewarm. He sees things... Um, I think he does. I know he's a merciful God. I, I don't get me wrong. And he's gracious with us. He's patient with us. But at the same time, to him who knows to do good and doesn't do it, it is sin. So if you know you're doing wrong and you are expecting a blessing, I'm sorry, but that blessing will not overtake you because it says that if we hearken diligently, it's, a, it's like a law laid out. It's like a principle laid out that if, if you do this, you'll get that. And and again, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of obedience. It's a lifestyle of um, hearkening to what his word says because it's real life. It's speaking of a life that is real, tangible, and blessed. Hallelujah. Okay? So that, that, that is summed up in the New Testament when Jesus said uh, um, that it's summed up in two commandments. I, I'm not sure exactly where that is, but... Um, it is there, and you can look that up yourself. 
But it says that all the commandments are summed up into love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. This is what the commandments are based on. Hallelujah. So you can take that new scripture uh, commandment and apply it to Deuteronomy 28. It says you will be blessed going in, blessed going out. You will be blessed in the city, blessed in the fruit of thy body. Are you sick? Well, let me tell you, the promises for God to heal you are in his word. He says if you will hearken diligently to his word, he will heal your body. Hallelujah. And it goes on. Blessed shall be thy basket in the store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and goest out. Blessed, blessed shall the uh, sorry, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against the sea to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee another way. And it goes on. You will be a blessed people if you hearken diligently to the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so back to Ephesians. Also, Proverbs 10, 6, which is another scripture I just thought of, uh, says that uh, the blessings are upon the head of the just. Are you... Just Have you been justified by the blood of the Lamb? Then you are a blessed people. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. Okay, and this is the area, one of the areas where uh, the church is, some of the people in church, in the body of Christ, are not aware of who they are in Christ, so they don't know what belongs to them. So it's my prayer today that you will find that, you will see that. Now there's the word I want to look at if we go back to uh, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So in other words, who has uh, blessed us with all favor, with all things that cause us to prosper spiritually. Okay, I'm talking spiritually here because you can have all sorts of material things and you can be as unhappy as whatever. You know, it's important that you understand that when you have everything spiritually, the, you are the wealthiest person on this earth, okay? So that's the heart of God. So let, I want to look at a word here, and the word is in. In heavenly places and in Christ Jesus. The word in is a preposition. And I found this really interesting. I, I, as I have said before in my teachings, I love the way the Lord instructs me and brings me into things that really are above my natural um, knowledge because I really didn't do good in school. I, I got um, only grade 9 education, but I did go back and get my grade 12 as an adult. So I, I really didn't do all that great in school, just to let you know that. you know, Not that it's important, but um, I just find it amazing how God takes people. You know, He, he uses people who uh, have no abilities naturally, and He will use them because He gets the glory. Hallelujah. And this isn't the first time that God, um, you know has uh, blessed me or um, spoken to me in a way that goes beyond my natural abilities of schooling, if we, if we look at it that way. So a preposition, and yes, I had to look all that up and study it out, but I just love how it relates to the message he gives me. I guess that's my point. A preposition is a word which shows relationship in a sentence with a noun, Okay, it's related to other words in that sentence. It denotes, okay, now listen carefully, being, remaining, union, or fellowship. It also denotes a fixed position. What is a fixed position? Well, that you don't even have to look that up. Fixed position means unmovable, okay? So this place of being spiritually minded and living supernaturally is found in relationship to Jesus Christ. You cannot have it any other way. You cannot prosper any other way. And he has given it all. He has done it all. When he died on the cross and rose, he gave it all to us to walk out. He has caused us to prosper in this area. But the problem is, is the majority of people in church do not know who is in them, okay? So if we go back to that scripture, what does it mean in heavenly places? What does that mean in heavenly places? So again, the word in is speaking relationally, remaining, 
Um, it's, it's being in heavenly places, remaining in heavenly places, in relationship.